What's going on, everybody? This is David Greenspan, as you should know by now, and I want to welcome you all back to Season 4 of the Mindshare Podcast. Additional podcasts are available at Mindshare101.com and on all the major podcast platforms. This week's episode is sponsored by Kits Keep In Touch Systems and our friends over at the Buzz Conference. Now, the Buzz has two dates that you need to mark down right now. Uh, the first one is happening on June 24th. So mark that date down, June 24th. This is a philanthropic initiative that the Buzz Conference has a goal of raising over a million dollars over the next five years to support indigenous communities. So a uh, very cool event. Uh, we encourage everybody to uh, check into that one. Um, June 24th, that's happening. We've also got Disruption 2022. And this one's going to be taking place on September 7th and 8th. Both events are going to be located at the Liberty Grand in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, so be sure to follow the buzz on Instagram at the Buzz Conference and give them a visit online at www.thebuzzconference.com to keep tabs with everything that they're up to. Uh, of course, we are very proud to have the Buzz Conference as an ongoing sponsor of the Mindshare podcast. Kits, Kits is always with us. Of course, Kits is with us. And uh, well, Kits is a, uh, a marketing powerhouse uh, with everything that you really need to get out there and build a whole bunch of Mindshare. And of course, I tell you all the time, Mindshare equals market share. And uh, well, what you want to be doing is you want to have a real solid system where you're going to be able to put all of your data, all of your contacts, all the people that bring you all your business, put them in a system and have a system that's going to help you through calendars, contact list, and uh, marketing. That is really, those are the three pillars of a CRM. And Kits has that fully loaded with all of the most effective keep in touch tools available. Um, and we talk about automation. We talk about automated. Um, there's one school of thought that says set it and forget it. Well, they will set and forget you. But there's another school of thought that says, well, we do need some systems and processes in the background. And well, hey, kits becomes your entire system and process. So I do encourage you go over to my site, mindshare101.com. Go to the top right, click on marketing, learn more about what the tools, uh, what the system's all about, and then get in touch with my team. They are awesome. They will help you. They will answer you all the questions you've got, uh, and they will get uh, they will get a little demo going, and then we'll discuss the details and see if you're ready to get started. But I'll tell you now, if you're not using kids, you got to check it out. And if you are using kids, well, moot point, you know what I'm talking about. Um, all that being said, as you know, we are also on a push to get to 100 reviews on iTunes. So I would like to ask you, if you haven't yet, and I mean, if you're a regular listener and you haven't yet, like why? Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, to everybody, uh, if you haven't yet, please mark this uh, this link down, rate this podcast.com forward slash mindshare 101. We would be grateful if you would take a quick moment. Uh, it is super, super easy. Just take a quick moment. Go on over there. Uh, again, rate this podcast.com forward slash mindshare 101. Give us a you know, a big five stars, a nice little review. Tell us how much you love the show and <laughs> feel free to spread the love and share the word with everybody you know. Today's episode is number 182. A technical wizard. He has been in sales for over 25 years and in real estate since 2005. He puts everything together using technology and is able to put it in perspective for both the realtor and the client. He takes everything to the next level. In his role, he is focused on helping his realtors find their next level of success. He is a new school thinker with an old school mentality and believes that no matter the tools we now have available to us, this is and always will be a people business built on relationships. A partner at Century 21 Heritage Group in Toronto. Joining me on this episode of the Mindshare Podcast today is Aaron Richardson. Aaron, welcome David. to the Mindshare Podcast. How are you? Love doing to be well, on man. here. This is great. First time. Yeah. Absolutely, but it's uh, it's a blast having you, man. I mean, listen, you know what? Probably long overdue. We have a ton of awesome and very powerful conversations every time we get together talking about marketing yeah. and all sorts of stuff. And I think that uh, it's about time that we share we share some of that love with everybody and start involving them in the conversation. Thank um, you for that intro too. I really appreciate yeah, it. If you man. could send me that, that'd be amazing. I can do that <laughs> on my website. <laughs> That's really good. Well, we will be uh, syndicating on Friday to all the major nice. podcast platforms, so you have to hear it a whole bunch. But um, Man, it's a crazy market over the past couple of years, you know, and uh, we're, we're, we are beginning to see a shift. And the more people that I speak to, the more we're starting to see, you know, there's there's variations of, of market that are taking place, you know, be it uh, central core, north of the core, different parts of the country, you know, but I, I, I got to preface this and say to everybody, and, and I'm, I'm sure we could agree on this. It's not a bad market. It's like, I personally believe it's an incredibly healthy market. And 
you know, although properties aren't selling in the same frenzied pace over they did, you know, as they did over the past 24 months, um, one of the fallouts of this is that, you know, the level of effort is going to need to go up if we want to have any more success, right? And this includes everything from negotiating, marketing, which we know are two of sort of the biggest roles that we play in the entire transaction. Um, but it also means that realtors are going to be looking for some Band-Aid fixes and some like real quick, like, you know, hoping for the best, you know. Um, and then we've got the ones who are like, you know, maybe a little bit more seasoned. They're going to keep doing what they know already works. So that's what I want to kind of get into here is like, you know, the biggest time wasters in real estate. But, you know, talking about what does work, what doesn't work when it comes to having success as a realtor. And, you know, where should people be spending their time? Um, and again, you know, the time wasters, as we said, but uh, where should they be spending their dollars? Mm -hmm. So we've got this false sense of confidence around where the business comes from. Um, and as mentioned off the top, as a new school thinker with an old school mentality, which I say with love, because I like to believe that I'm, I'm right there in that same boat with you. But uh, we need to embrace technology for sure. And I want to jump off that because I know you're, you're, you, you love the tech. Where are agents making the absolute biggest mistakes when it comes to selecting and implementing the right tools? And why are they making these mistakes constantly? You're jumping as an agent, you're jumping into things that hopefully you see, you know, other people working for other people. And when you're on social media and you're seeing all the technology that's out there, the videos and the, um, the, the social interaction, but they're doing it online. So it's, it's a shift in the way people are thinking from a marketing standpoint. And um, I think people always jump on to what is easier rather than what is maybe different or the, the hard stuff is the stuff that works and the easy stuff is, you know, they keep spinning their wheels. And uh, from a technology standpoint, um, social media could be a time waster. And I'm not saying that it's not effective. Again, knowing that technology is important and, and, and social is what you want. I think uh, one of the biggest time wasters can be the computer. I mean, you're not really putting yourself face to face as much as you should. Now, is that is that wrapping up when we say computer? Does that include this thing? This, this, sure the does. Phone? <laughs> I right, mean, so just the like, screens. It's the screens, right? It's it's what we it's what we preach to our kids. You know, I've got two young children. We always, you know, minimize the screen time, um, and then we see ourselves looking at the screen every five minutes as well. So it's it's a balancing act. It's make, don't get you know don't go down that rabbit hole of. You know, I need to be, I need to be tech. I need to be online. I need to be doing the things like online leads. Uh, everybody talks about online leads and all this sort of stuff. I've done it. I've been there. It was a hobby for me, but you never have to lose. You, you can never lose um, the mindset of the relationship building and getting in front of as many people as possible. Quality relationships. I, I, I'm going to circle back to that online lead conversation in a minute or yeah. two, because, you know, that's <laughs> one that I, I want to have here. Um, but again, as you talk about tech and, and or, or we talk about the fact that you love the tech and I, I just, I know that, mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're, you're super great with it. Mm -hmm. You're like the first one going like, like back off the screen time. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is an important thing for people to understand. Cause I think that I'm as technology become more prevalent, you know, people have done what they can to learn and understand mm -hmm. how do I implement and some are quicker than others. Obviously, that means that some are much slower than others, you know, but the, I think the overall point that I'm going to is through that progression of trying to learn it all. It's almost like we've become so glued to it and thinking that I've got to do everything through this screen that we've lost out on where the business actually comes from. And in, in fact, to that, where does, and regardless of the technology, where does an agent's business come from? Is it people they know or people oh, they don't know? Majority. Listen, it's, it's, you, you, can, you can talk to any coach in the business. You can talk to any, um, you go to any seminar, any big event. I mean, th listen, anyone that knows the business says the same stat. And it's either 80, 84, 87. You know, it's somewhere in that 80 range. I just go that, 70 to 90 because you know right? what? It, Big range, you got 20%, yeah. but we know that it's way more than half. Sure. And, and that's through the people you know. It's always easier to do business through people that you've already built a relationship with you or that has transacted and done business with you. So your repeat referral business is foundationally where you should be spending most of your time and most of your effort. There are technology systems out there that can help with that. But if it's a time waster, if it's one of those technology systems that's broken, it doesn't fit within your model You'll be spending a lot of time trying to make it fit and it just doesn't fit. So I'm passionate about technology, 
I'm actually more passionate about technology that doesn't work as much as technology that does work because you got to explain that one to me for a second. Uh, you know, there's a lot of systems within our, um, within our business that is sometimes forced upon us even like whether it be MLS systems, whether it be CRM systems, it could be uh, transactional systems um, that whether or not it's something that the brokerage uses or something that the board uses. And some of these systems are difficult to use. And, and some of them, um, you know, I, I love joining committees and getting involved so that, I mean, that button shouldn't be here. It, it takes me an extra five minutes to get there when it shouldn't have to. So let's get that fixed. Let's, let's join in, let's talk about it and let's get it fixed. So that's why I like getting involved in some technology systems that maybe aren't perfect, but you know, if we, if we, if we, if we can involve ourselves in that conversation and get those things shifted, it makes our jobs a lot easier. So I, I, I enjoy that. You know, to, to, to something you just said there about we get these things maybe pushed upon us or they're introduced to us. And sometimes we don't really know why we're using it. And I think there's a lot of tech that's been introduced to, to agents mm -hmm. over the years that say, hey, you know, oh, this is going to do this. Oh, that's going to do that. And, I, <laughs> you know, if I said this and I think I've personally gotten to this point, I think a lot of people got to this point, but you need a username and password for <laughs> all of it. Now to that, there's some folks that might just say, just use the same one and everything will be easy. Well, I'd say like that is the most broken idea you've got because security, which sure. we know in cyberspace is almost non-existent. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to be using the same login information for every single thing. And I'll tell you, I must have hundreds of different usernames and passwords for like the hundreds of different things that I've signed up to over the years. And it's a pain in the butt to remember anything. Yeah. Now you sit there and go, okay, I'm going to take on this next application technology tool I now need to learn how to use that. I need to remember how to log into that. I got to figure out how I'm going to connect that to the other system I'm using. I mean, hell, you know, Google tries to make that stuff simple and they still complicate the, you know, what out of it. Right. Like yeah. sometimes you don't know if I'm changing this or if I'm changing anyways, the best, Hey, listen, the best thing that's come out so, uh, for that, for that topic is biometrics, right? When you look at your phone and it, and it logs you in, that's the best system, right? It's, it's verifying through your face. Yeah. Right. So what, and Steve jobs, and I don't know his quote, I'm, I'm horrible with quotes, but I'll give you the gist, right? He once said that basically, listen, let's find out what the user wants and needs, then make the technology fit that need rather than the other way around, which a lot of tech companies do. They go and they say, what's the technology? Oh, here's the technology. This is how we're going to make it work for the user. They can't think that way, right? Yeah. So you can, it's apparent right away from just logging in, like you said, to systems, to whether or not they that company or that piece of technology understands that. You know, and I, I would say to that and being you know, having a technology company through kits and building out mm -hmm. a CRM, I would tell you that we built that out with Loop CRM very much off the heels of like by realtors for realtors with that exactly in mind. And I'll tell you Absolutely. here, you know, we feel real confident about the system. We get some amazing, amazing feedback. That said, is it 100% bulletproof? There's not a 100% bulletproof technology tool out there. There's going to be people that understand certain things. There's going to be people that don't understand certain things. There's going to be certain features that you do use and others that you don't use. And I think that it really wraps back to, you know, it's a good point there of, is it being built for, you know, the person to make their life easier? Or is it being built in a way where it's like, hey, this is what we got. Try to figure out how to make it work. You know, um, well, but I mean, to that, yeah, sorry. No, no, I, I 100% agree. Some of the best CRMs in the business, the ones that do everything for you, or at least they say they do everything for you, are the ones I stay away from because they're too involved. It involves me having to spend hours upon hours, first of all, learning it. Then second of all, I'm telling it what to do. A lot of times it's trying to tell me what to do. It doesn't fit within my day. Yeah. So it's, you know, it, it just doesn't mesh well. The simplest systems sometimes are the best systems. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it just makes it easy to implement and get it done. And I think that most of the stuff that's offered in so many different tech spaces, you, you don't use it all right. You find what works for you. But what, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that realtors have about not just tech, but the business overall? Well, misconceptions. Um, I, I, the biggest one we deal with on a, on a daily, because again, I, I you know manage and run a brokerage. Um, mm -hmm. The agents are always coming, you know, and I, I don't think it's ever changed, right? Uh, lo looking back at some of the um, sales movies that I've seen in, in, since the '70s, right? Leads, leads, leads. Give me the leads. Give me the lead. Where are the leads, right? Um, and it's you know maybe this is a transition to the topic online leads. I don't know, but let, let's be honest. I mean, if it's easier to get 
somebody calling you looking for a house, um, you know, why not? Right. And I guess um, most of the agents are looking for that magic um, potion that they can, you know, sit back and have the leads come in or have somebody provide the leads for you or pay for the leads to come your way. So I guess that's the biggest rabbit hole people are going down. And many people are leveraging that, not only the lead generation companies, but the team concept. You know, they're leveraging these systems that they know that all the agents want and saying, come on with me, I'll give you leads or uh, pay me X amount of dollars, I'll give you leads. Um, and that is the biggest misconception is that anyone's business is based on a model wrapped around lead generation or online lead generation. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest misconception is that leads generate um, a good portion of anyone's business. Well, so tell me this then. I mean, uh, you know, going after the whole lead generation thing for a second, I, I like that saying it's a misconception. You know, when we think about it, is it a sound strategy in any way, or are we finding that the bell curve has now started to not just flatten, but start to find its way down where you've had so many people that have actually tried it, spent money investing time, dollars, effort into it, only to realize that, again, it's one of these things that are just a complete waste of time? Well, the problem is, is that they've spent the time doing it, and now they've got to go back to the beginning. Um, if, if, if anyone getting into the industry today was going to build a sound business in real estate. You know, um, it doesn't matter whether or not you're two years in or brand new. Um, let's start where the core business comes from and focus on 85% of where your business is going to come from. This friends, family, um, repeat referral, all the rest. So um, when somebody comes to me and says, Aaron, you know, how do I generate these online leads? I said, well, how many people are on your, your database? How many, how many relationships have you built? Bring me that list. And I said, so how many people are on it? And they're always like, well, you know, I don't really have one. A lot of them are saying that. And second, uh, well, maybe about 100. I said, well, if you don't know that number, 100% mm -hmm. that number, it says, is it 87? Is it 89 people on your? If you don't know that number, I know you're not ready for online leads because you haven't built out the foundational program that when you build the relationship, you filter them through the funnel of putting them into a system that you keep in touch with your people. <laughs> I always use that. I mean, you are, you're keeping in touch with the That's... people, building the relationships. And if foundationally you haven't set that up, uh, you're just working uphill and you're always going to be struggling and climbing up the next lead. And then you've got the budgeting side of that as well, right? Like when we look at the, the actual oh, yeah. cost of it all, like here, what, what do you hear from agents who uh, are spending money online I mean, you just mentioned, again, if they haven't got the contact list in check, it's probably not even the place that that like they should be anywhere near. Um, that being said, for those that you know that are spending it, have yeah. you heard probably more on the side of like, wow, like it just takes so much effort to convert versus the side that's like, oh, my God, it's a gold mine. I love waking up every morning and I got deals that are just sitting in my inbox. Well, okay, so it's, there's different types of, yeah, there's different types yeah. of leads and the typical lead sources that are out there you can purchase are at quantity, right? So um, you just do the numbers. And again, you can Google this, you can look at the conversion numbers, everyone's in and around the same and different geographical areas are different. I've been doing online lead generation for 17 years. Mm -hmm. I know the numbers and I understand the, the, the concept and it's all about conversion and I get it. But the problem is, is it takes so much time now. If you look at um, how much a lead cost, regardless of that, let's look at the amount of leads that need to come in in order to convert. Okay, right now in the GTA conversion is probably on average below 1% now. It used to be around 2%, more people are doing it, more people are on to yeah, all the rest of it's probably below 1%. If you're doing 1%, yeah, one in every 100 leads transact, then you look at, okay, how what's the average contact time per lead that you need to consistently follow up and, and convert? And that's eight. That's the average. So eight times in order to, to start to come uh, on average, in order to start to um, have a good quality conversation with the lead. And then out of, so that you're not 800 contacts before you get one deal. How much time is that taking? How much wow. effort? Wow, 800 contacts. Right? So Wow. 100 leads convert to one deal 800 times. That's just to just, just to have the conversation, right? Just to, now, just to talk just to, to people. people. Yeah, just to talk to people. Wow. Right? Those now, some keep serious in mind, that's like, that's some serious time invested right there. Well, sure. And it's 100 per, let's say you get 100 leads per month. 
As soon as you start putting them into the funnel and starting to call them, 800 turns to 1600, right? And then it just goes up month after month. Now you've got 6,000 people in your, how can you manage that properly, really? It's a numbers game, right? So the reason why teams are successful with this is because they will hire agents on a, on a pretty hefty split in order to do these calls, do these follow-ups and teach right. you how to do it. That's great. And it's great opportunity for an agent to learn how to make those, you know, follow-up phone calls and, and keep them diligent. So there's, there's good things about it, but the question to you, know, that you have to ask yourself is what is your time worth? What yeah, are you paying yourself in order to make those phone calls and those follow-ups? Right. And if you're doing it for someone else, could you be doing it for yourself? Or should you be just looking at time and looking at a better quality um, conversion through relationship building? I'd much rather take somebody out for a lunch and talk to them for two hours than to call 10 leads back, you know, over that lunchtime, right? And it's you've obviously found over the course of, of your time in the business so far that that, that is a, a lot more worthwhile to spend yeah. two hours with one person at lunch. Yeah. Who you know, who you've got a right. relationship with, to know you like uh -huh. you, pretty much trust you, is already established, versus right. trying to find 10 people that are total cold leads today from online. Right. Now, right. I, and I mean, I, it's, yeah. I mean, if, if anyone's not doing online leads and they're making a lot of money at it, typically they'll have a team underneath them doing the time wasting for you. Yeah. See, right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you said that, doing the time wasting for you. And I think that that's what it comes back to is, is looking at again. And, and again, as we're talking about biggest time wasters in real estate, it's that whole thing of going, is it is it worth my time? You know, here we come back to a dollar perspective as well and say, not just a way, you know, uh, is it worth my time? What about the investment, the dollar investment that goes into something like that? Right. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think too, that, um, I'll share a quick story. I know, I know some of our listeners have heard this one before, but I remember speaking to a guy a number of years back, and I, I know I've told this story many times, but um, essentially in long story short was he spent about two grand a month on ads or, or on, on Facebook to have somebody else. And, and I'll get to that sort of generalization of like just having somebody post for you. But it was uh, right now what I'm trying to make an example of is the concept of time mm -hmm. versus money. His thing was he was going to spend $2,000 a month having somebody else do his Facebook because he didn't have the time. And when I said to him, you know, at the end of the day, that's going to be 24 grand at the end of the year that you're putting out. You still got to pay the tax man on top of that. So you're trying to save yourself time, yet you are now on the hook to make another $35,000 this year so you could pay the taxes and you could pay for the expense that you just brought on. So did you really save yourself time? Right. So, you know, there's the concept where I, where I feel that uh, agents don't typically really look at the dollars involved. They don't look at the budgeting involved and the money versus the time perspective is probably the way I'm going with that. Yeah. Well, very simply put, I'm going to do it on my little calculator because I, 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 you know, I always do this with different numbers and yep. let's take a hundred thousand dollars. Somebody wants to make a hundred thousand dollars in real estate next year and uh, they want to take some time off. So let's say you work 48 out of the uh, 52 weeks. You took it, you mm -hmm. give yourself four weeks holiday or yeah, four weeks holiday. Um, so you're taking a um, hundred thousand, you're dividing by 48 weeks. Um, then you're dividing it by, let's say you work 40 hours a week. We're just taking averages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So that's 52, right? So $52 an hour yep. is what you're paying yourself for hundred thousand dollars. I was going to ask you, how do you normally determine what you're worth per hour? Right. So at a hundred thousand, you're, you're at $52 an hour. Okay. Uh, you're over a hundred dollars an hour at 200,000 and et cetera, et cetera. Right. So at $52 an hour or let's say $200,000 salary, because let's be honest, let's just shoot a little higher. So at $200,000 that you make a year, um, you're at $100 an hour. And uh, I had one of my agents uh, hand uh, going door to door, hanging up uh, door hangers. And I said, well, why are you doing that? Well, because, you know, I, I want to get out. I want to get in. Well, that's fine. If you want to get, you know, get out there, get physical, get healthy, all that kind of stuff. Yep. I, I said, but how much are you paying yourself to do that? And she just said, well, what do you mean? Well, how much does it cost to go in and, you know, hand deliver the flyers? And so we broke that down and it ended up just, well, I could pay somebody, you know, $100 or something like that to, to hand, hand these things out. I said, well, what are you paying yourself? So we did the calculation, $100 an hour. So she was paying herself $600 where she could pay somebody else $100, right? right? So what now, what, you know, instead of just hanging out those, hanging the door hangers, what else could you be doing with that time? 
right? Taking people out for lunch, making some phone calls, booking some appointments, um, dropping by and popping by and giving some gifts, you know, um, handwritten note cards, all the personal service stuff, the client stuff that, uh, that you should be focused on building relationships. So if you focus on the relationship stuff, which is worth that time investment and pay somebody else to do the door hangers, then she's, you know, essentially spending a better quality time and, and she will get a higher return on relationship, we call it, right? Higher return on relationship because that's the time she's spending building the relationship than any uh, door hanging that she should be paying somebody $20 an hour for or whatever they're, you know, charging these days. So it's a great way to spin that. Let's go back over that calculation one more time, just so that everybody really was able to uh, mark that down. Because I think I think that's that's a key point right there for everybody tuned in to really figure out what are you worth per hour. Per hour. Yeah. So you said take the uh, the income you've made, let's say in the past twelve months. Take that. Sure. Take that dollar. You can go backwards or you can go forwards, but yeah. Okay. Or or take that goal that you sure. want to achieve this year, right? Yep. You take that. You divide that by the number of working uh, weeks you put in. Yeah. And so then divide many, that by the number of working hours per week. Per week. Yeah. And yeah. now you've determined what you are worth per hour. That's correct. There and you if go. you're doing anything that you can pay somebody else right. in order to do for a lesser amount where you can focus your time on your clients, your 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 relationship building, that's where you should unload. Okay. Yeah. So now we got onto that through the story that I shared. And as we were talking about running ads and whatnot, I just wanted to ask this question here. Um, and just more for the sense, <laughs> like I'll, I'll take it here that we're saying right, right now, unless you've got a really big team with a lot of people that can waste time for you, mm -hmm. probably stay away from this stuff. It's not the most effective strategy you have. Um, with that being said, for the folks that maybe you've heard that it works for, or just mm -hmm. even the majority of people that are doing things, are they doing it through Google? Are they doing it through Facebook? Are they doing it through both? Is there something that you're hearing might have some more effectiveness to it or might be a bigger challenge for people? Just Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, I used to do Facebook. I, li I like the visual aspect of Facebook. I like the creative aspect of Facebook, right. you know. Um, so so I, I tend, and, and you used to be able to really target on Facebook. Now they've, with privacy and all the rest, they've made changes. It's been a bit, lot more difficult to target market yeah. audiences on Facebook. Um, so, and then there's the, there's the Google side of things. So it's more generic, you know, find homes in Newmarket, like searching for homes with pools in Newmarket, for example, as a search term, and then your website comes up. And if you have a good website with good lead capture devices on it, that allows the person to go on your website and hopefully sign up and, or log in or, or utilize the site and, and then you can contact them um, and, and qualify them as a lead. So, so both work. And, and both have a different business model, right? And, uh, and keep in mind, I'm not talking people out of doing some lead gen, right? In, in, in anyone's business plan, they should have three categories, really, th three sources of income. And the first one's always your 85% repeat referral business, and that's got to be solid. Then you move on to the next. And it could be open houses. It could be prospecting through, um, you know, an event, or maybe a charitable organization or part of, et cetera. And then the next one could be online lead generation. And then what they do is they plug into your foundational sphere of influence program, right? So any good business plan starts with the foundations and then you plug in. So online lead gen is just a plug in to yep. that foundational program. So I'm not against it. Um, the question is, is uh, what are you paying for? So one of my, my agents decided, well, let's not go with qu uh, quantity of leads. Let's go with quality. So she went with a program um, that it was hefty. It was could cost $10,000 in order to generate these leads. For and the year. For the, for the year. And it was okay. 12 qualified, ready to go buyers and sellers, right? And all day long, I would pay that $10,000. 12 a month, 12, 12 a year? Twelve thousand, or sorry, ten thousand dollars, and right. I, I, I don't know whether or not if it was over. I, I know she was doing it for about six months, so I don't know if that was divided by six months monthly or whatnot. But, but they said for ten thousand, you can get twelve qualified. Was that qualified that's their thing? Yep, that was their thing. Okay. And there's all different models, but this one was right. interesting. And I said, listen, up to you. You can definitely. You're a converter. You can you can convert people. So go ahead and give it a shot um, if you want. You know, as one of your lead sources, if you get a deal. Maybe you get your money back. Maybe you double your money, right? So, and that's what she was kind of going with. Well, 12 qualified, ready to go leads. You know, that sounds, sounds, well, 12 deals. I mean, you'll be making over a hundred thousand. The 10 mm -hmm. times return on investment is mm -hmm. not a bad thing, right? Uh, spend 10, make a hundred. That's what she would be looking to do in this case. Um, you see, sorry, go ahead. Finish that. 
Yeah. No, I just, and the results of the program was very much that she was disappointed in the end, right? She was dealing really? Yeah. Now keep in mind, those type of leads take time to come to fruition, right? Yeah. Um, you know, some programs will say it take you six to eight months of consistent follow up in order to finally get a somebody to, you know, transact with you. So, you know, she's got the 12 leads, but um, she went back and forth. And, and of course, they made promises that she could have replaced leads if these leads didn't uh, work out, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, which they refused to do and, and whatnot. So, you know, she spread the news about the lead generation company that she didn't feel work. Now, it may not work for her, may work for other people. I get right. it. I get it. But this one didn't work for her. And she's out 10 grand. Now, it is what it is. That was her investment. That was her, you know, she made uh, last year, she she doubled her income by putting in the foundations. Right. We, she was, she was, she was on a coaching problem uh, program last year that built up that, um, that key foundational program. She doubled her income. So she decided to take some of that income, put it aside and then spend it on a lead source. That's what she we did. see it all the time with our coaching clients, right? Yeah. Where they're, you know, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are out there trying to put things together without the proper, maybe structure and foundation to the system and process. Mm -hmm. And you know, we see them spending a lot of money. And so we start to adjust and we create that foundation. I, I, I say to everybody, it's like digging a hole or building a house. You don't just put, you know, the first floor on the ground. You've got to dig the hole. You've got to put the foundation, then you build up from there. And to that effect, it's always that database, right? Because even with what you're saying now, which we know, and anybody who's tried this stuff knows, you might be paying for the stuff, but when it comes in, it's still got to, like you said, go into the system. And mm -hmm. that system has to start to chunk through the follow-up and the touch points and everything else to help you with that conversion. So mm -hmm. there's a cost to that system. There's a cost to generating the leads. There's mm -hmm. a cost for your time, as we've already discussed here. Now it's what is that ROI? That's right. um, an example that I put out there to, uh, well, I put this out in a video a few weeks ago where I had made mention that. You know, when you look at your contact list, and I, I suggest this on 100 people, you're about $1,500 all year to stay in touch with 100 people. Yep. Those are your best people. Okay. And we're yeah, using only a number of 100 right now. And you know what the, so if the percentage I use is uh, between 15 and 20% return on that 100. Okay. okay. So let's say you're at the least end of the, the uh, let's say you just send a nice newsletter. You, you, you talk to everybody quarterly, you send a calendar, you do your good things you do with them. Let's say you're at only 15% a return on a hundred people. That's 15 deals, 15 right. deals, average, let's say average commission on a deal. I don't, even if you take the least amount, right. You're still at around $300,000, right. Maybe, maybe you're saying 300, 200. guys. See, I'm going to go low on you. I'm gonna I, go I was going to say deals. maybe even 200. I'm going to yeah, go let's say, five deals at 20 K and say a hundred grand. Okay, uh, that's fifteen hundred dollar investment to ROI one hundred grand. Follow me. Here. That's still low. And, yeah, okay. what what times? Like anybody would say that's the saying. biggest return on investment. Dude, follow this one now. Go. <laughs> let's take it further and say this and say now. And she spent ten grand to get twelve opportunities. Ten that's grand right. to get twelve opportunities. Watch this. Fifteen hundred dollars. Let's say it takes us. Seven to 12 years, I'm going to tell you 10 on a regular basis on that average for when people are going to come back and do repeat referral, whatever it is. I say the 10 year plan all the time, right? Have that mindset, long term investment. So say it's 10 years at the bare minimum of 100 people at five deals a year, 20K each deal. What was your investment? 15 grand over a decade. Yeah. Not one year. What was your ROI at the low end? Not even high like what you said or even middle like what you said. I'm going low. It's a million dollars. So for a $15,000 investment, we can net back a million as long as we just stay in touch with the right people. Now I say to anybody scale that, go up to 200 people, that's $30,000 investment. That's a $2 million ROI. And again, I'm still being conservative. And I get that different markets have different things going on. Yeah. But man, the investment when it comes to that is huge. So here, we talked about CRM. We sort of brought that up and said, you know, you need to have the right one. In a nutshell, because there's a majillion options out there you know, we've got one, there's a million options out there for people, but what, you know, how does an agent use it to be successful? And, and again, the high level of that, cause we could go into the nitty gritty and spend hours talking about that. But like, yeah. you know, an agent says, okay, I, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I love my pen and paper. Like that's what I do. Right. And we're like, look, you need some sort of system though, to help you. And I would recommend to everybody pen and paper is amazing. I love it. I carry it everywhere. That being said, 
having the access to your info in this mm -hmm. like little thing, it is crucial. And this is where we can put things in place in the background for us while we're out there working. Yeah. What are your sort of like high levels where you say to somebody like, yeah, I know you love your pen and paper, but you know, you really, you, you know, you want to step it up, you go into a CRM and here's what it could do for you. Yeah. Well, CRMs are again, meant to be not time wasters and, and whatever you do when it with a, with a CRM, don't let the CRM tell you how to run your business, right? That's not what a CRM is there for. It's to manage your business. And you you should be able to um, set up systems in there that work for you, right? So make sure it's you, you know, you can you can use it effectively. And one of the couple of things that I do that is specific to um, to that is is I'm not, and we're all we'd love to say we're all organized. Right. We love to say that we're going to always sit down at nine to 10 o'clock, make our phone calls, you know, to plan our days and all the rest. But it gets crazy. And real estate agents, we run everywhere with our heads cut off. Right. So what I always say, listen, set up right from the beginning, something that is an engine that keeps running. You don't have to do anything. If you get sick, your energy level goes down or you get just get too busy to forget about it. Set something up that the minimum is always happening. So the first thing is I always tell in, in any business plan, I say, how many people do you know? Bring me their addresses. Find out where they live. If, they, if you don't know where they live, you don't know their product, first of all. So you're selling product. And if you don't know where they live, I mean, that's that's just a given. So give them a call. Ask them for their address. Let them know that you'd like to send out a nice little newsletter every month, keeping up to date with the real estate industry. I hope you could get that from you. And if they're, trust me, most people will give it to you. Okay. Yeah. And the people that won't maybe aren't the people you're going to be doing business with. They're not part of your hundred. So if you can get those hundred, uh, David's right. You're going to be making minimum. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to make a hundred, hundred. You'll be making 200. If you're may only making a hundred, come see me. I'll, I'll put you on <laughs> that better program because you'll make more out of a hundred people. You should be making 200 plus. Okay. And, and it's just the systems in place. So a, a physical newsletter reminds people every single month you're in the business. It was my number one marketing when I had my, uh, my own business, my team business, everyone went on, everyone went on the newsletter program and 85% of our business was from people calling off of that newsletter. I'd forget every now and then to call people. I wasn't quite as diligent with things. That's always running in the background. Then once a quarter calls, your calendar every year, I've got an email set up with a, you know, just occasional greetings. It's called, it's, you know, it's a, you know, happy, uh, happy holidays, um, you know, happy Mother's Day, Father's Day, or, or, or uh, Canada Day, right? It's coming up. They'll send it a little Canada. It's a little reminder, nice little thing. And maybe some things that go out every now and then. Uh, emails are about 30% effective. If you just do emails, you're going to do 30% of the business you want to do. You want to send that physical mail newsletter. That was one. My and let, let me just up. remind everybody, when I said tech wizard, you can look him up and back check that. He loves his technology um, and he's amazing with it. Yet you're Excellent. hearing it here first right now. There are just certain things that you need in place to have success in real estate. Just set that up. All the other stuff will fall in line. You'll make your phone calls. You'll bump into people. You'll go out for dinners. You'll 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 try your note cards and handwritten cards and all this kind of stuff. You'll do different things and coaches will get you on different programs. But if you foundationally set those systems up, you'll make a, a um, you'll make a percentage return on your relationships just based on that. And then, and then you can start adding in the other thing. And you can talk about ROI all day long. You can start a farm area and say, hey, I made 200,000 last year. I kept 10% back. That's 20 grand. I'll start a farm area. Uh, 20 grand in two years should be 10 times. So there's another 200,000 in a farm area for, for 20 grand, make you, make you another 200. It should be 10 times in a farm area. So these are just traditional systems that are proven. What's so not we, been proven. Yeah, so yeah. go ahead. No, 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 no. Finish that. No, I was just going to say, I, I still am to the, to this day, there's only, oh, I don't even know if there's a handful of people and some people are probably, uh, you know, listening to this and saying, Aaron, you're wrong. I made, I made 10 deals off of my online leads last year. I've got a guy actually in my office that just does online leads. Congratulations. You're, you're doing a great job. And yeah. he comes in every day, follow up, follow up, follow up. He's always on the phone, right? His time is with the online leads. Now he doesn't even drive. Okay. He, he's a real estate agent without a license mm -hmm. and he, and he was an award winner last year. Wow. So he was so diligent and so good at continuously following up. He made the online lead stuff work. But when we got him into a newsletter and we got him into the relationship business, that's where it started to really take off, right? So and now well, he's able and to I imagine that's kind of where award winning comes from too, in the sense where absolutely because he's doing so much heavy lifting. And I've said that the same thing to be to people before. And I, I just I want to clarify that. I love what you said there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the stuff doesn't work. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I do beg the question as to who all these random people are going to some random, you know, ad to click on some random realtor when we all know people. But beyond, and, and, and I still beg the question of like, how are there that many people out there that are going to random strangers rather than connecting with their people? I just, it, it that logic doesn't still click for me. But there's people making a living. Yep, no, the, so it, as long as you got the bankroll and the yep. effort, you can do it. But you also got to keep in mind that it is, no matter what, it is and always will be a relationship business. And at some point in life, when we do get a little bit you know, older, maybe a little bit more tired, not as much energy, do you still want to be running at that pace or do you want the business to just start to kind of flow? And if it do, it comes back to those systems. Yeah. And right? again, I know we keep knocking the online lead stuff, but there's other components to online leads that you you, you just, I've, I've seen it because I know the ones that are doing online leads as a lead source and it's great. Those quality of clients, will run you around because they that's, do not respect your time. And you could, yeah, listen, you can have the great personality, you can convert, and you can make sure that they are not wasting your time. But in general, it's a lot ha it's a lot harder uh, when you're dealing with people that don't, don't know you as a person. And they're like, yeah, show me houses. And then show me more houses. Show me more houses. And, you know, if, if you're not qualifying them properly and you're really not going through the process, I see a lot of people running around with online leads saying they work, they work. I'm, yeah. I'm showing houses. I'm like, well, how many? How, how? And they end up being, to be honest with you, the worst clients in the world because they just don't respect you. They don't respect your time. They think that you, they're your glorified Uber you know, just driving around showing them properties. So they're also the zero different. relationship, zero, zero. Now, Again, back to the relationship stuff. If you can take that, convert that into a relationship, it's different if you're good at right. that. But then if you're that good, why aren't you spending the time with your sphere of influence and, and right. converting those people and getting repeat referral stuff, right? That's the time you want to spend. Okay. So here, talking about time we want to spend, talking about CRM, talking about putting, you know, having some marketing in the background, running that CRM, the fact that we've got to have our database in that CRM. And I said right off the top, there's three pillars to CRM. There was the contact list, which we mentioned, the importance of having that in there, which I also want to make sure and we clarify too, that for anybody that's out there that is, uh, you know, working on leads or whatever it be, we always got to keep budget in mind, right? Money is, is is huge. And that's why we said, you know, figure out what you are worth per hour. We gave that calculation. But to that, also recognizing that, you know, when you look at the money aspect, the marketing channels cost money, but so do the systems in the background. And so everything needs to be budgeted for. So now as we look at the system, we say, okay, contact list. We look at marketing. My third pillar of a CRM is about that whole thing around scheduling and time. And, and I guess I would ask the question and say, you know, we've been preaching you CRM for a long time, right? We've been putting it out there to people use the CRM. Why are t realtors typically always late? Like <laughs> what's the, what's your take on the importance of like this, this concept around time management? Wow. And I know I, I put an umbrella over the late. entire industry right there, but I can laugh about it. We can all laugh about it. Realtor <laughs> time versus real time. It is, it is. It's yeah, just what it uh, is. I, I would hope that realtors aren't late to the important things like listing appointments and, and your buyer is out, you know, at a property and you meet in there on, on time. I would hope that they're on time for those things. And maybe it's the other things that they, they show up late for like training and, you know, it's always, you got to wait an extra five minutes for the rest of the agents to come in. Um, you know, it's usually because they are, are, you know, running around with the head. They're not just not organized, right? They're not um, time blocking effectively. They're not uh, leaving themselves a little bit of uh, uh, space in between, you know, uh, appointments, right? So it's, uh, it's, it is about time management. And I, I use my phone. I mean, you talk about different CRMs. Your CR, you have one that you use every day. Everybody has a CRM they use every day, and that's your phone. All your contacts are in there. Your phone number's in there. It's organized. You can you can set dates and times and reminders with your calendar. So your phone is the first CRM you'll ever use. Now, does it do automation? Is it specific to real estate? Does it send out good you know content? Can you get your newsletter sent out for like those are the other things you're going to need a second CRM for. And then there might, that CRM may just be your newsletter CRM. You could have a CRM, another CRM for birthday cards or uh, for online lead generation could be a CRM and follow up. Like uh, when I was running my business, I think I had four, you know, active CRMs at any given time doing different things, right? Um, I don't think there is a magic bullet in this industry in terms of one CRM. I think they, they there's there's good good with good good things with each of them, um, but uh, you're, you should at least have two, right? Your phone 
and then something else that does some good automated systems that are quality. Um, and and listen, David, I've known your system for like I mean, the the uh, kit system for many many years, and I, and I've used it. And it's it's by far when you're talking about quality. I mean, you want to impress your clients with uh, the the different variations on newsletter. I mean, I I was super impressed, and I always have been, and Thank and that is a great that. product, right? Um, so there you go. There's there is your fifteen percent. Now you're going to need to call them every now and then. You're going to need to do certain things. Right. Um, but if you're going to spend extra time, you said fifteen hundred, right? Yeah. yeah I, we're, I, we're saying like, and I'll tell you again, based on yeah. our system, fifteen dollars ahead. Yeah. To stay in touch all year. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's say it's fifteen hundred, and that, it doesn't matter. I'm what I would say is okay. So, you've got fifteen hundred making. You said a minimum one hundred thousand. I'm going to say two hundred thousand because mm -hmm. I think that's reality. Oh yeah. So two hundred thousand dollars. Well, why not spend five thousand? Go. Oh yeah, I'll spend five thousand for two hundred thousand. Okay. So up the game, right? Start doing gifts. Start doing pop buys. Yep. Start, oh, yeah. you know. And and with you you know with your CRM you can just print your list and say okay here's my addresses I'm gonna start crossing them off everyone gets a pumpkin and everyone gets you know whatever it is and I used to do that I mean two pop buys every year um, you know two events every year for customer appreciation that sort of stuff these are the things that you spend your time and money on and at the end of the year look back and you spent five six thousand dollars big deal you make two hundred thousand right and uh, it's just the best foundational systems out there for sure. So as we, we continue to talk about marketing for a second, I, I hit on a uh, few different things. We, you've already sort of preached about sending a newsletter and I, I absolutely love it. Obviously, you know, it, it, it's got kind of like a more personal thing on my end when I say that, sure. but you know, outside of that, there's a reason for it. And I think people look at that as an old school tactic. And I think that people say, Oh, people don't want to get it. I'm not going to send it to them. And I, I tell people like, it's not about whether they want it. It's about whether you want their business. Right. If you want to keep building the mind share and be present with them, it's the same thing like here. So we talk to newsletters, social media. What about time being spent on social media? We talked about and, and as we yeah. talk about biggest time wasters in real estate. Right. We know that people are spending on average three hours a day mm -hmm. scrolling social media. OK, that's a lot of time. And I don't think people track that time. I don't think I think if people put that in their schedule, they go, oh, my God, like way too much. So there's a realization that needs to be had there. But we look at a marketing tactic of a social and we look at, you know, versus let's say sending a newsletter and people having this misconception that people may not want the newsletter. They might just throw it out. Much the same with social. I can actually scroll past your social quicker than I can throw your newsletter or delete your newsletter. I can also, when I go to social media, I'm not going there looking for the most important piece of information I've ever seen. I'm probably there just out of habit. So it's much the same, be present, show up. Mm -hmm. But what's your yep. take on, on the effectiveness of the way agents use social media, uh, maybe the time they spend on social media? And again, do we do we see this as a big time waster? Um, are are most people spending time with it or do you think people are effective with it? What's your thoughts? No, oh, listen, there's a, there's a lot of agents that I don't know, like they'll come into the office, they'll pop open their computer, you spend a lot of time on social media, they'll come out to training, they'll do the different things that they, let's say, think that they're at work, right? They think that they put in an eight hour, uh, eight hour day. The question is, is who did you meet, right? Like any, did you meet anybody new today? Yep. Did you talk to anybody about real That's estate right. today? Have you had a good conversation and built a relationship today? What have you done in that area? And if you haven't done any of that, then you're wasting your time. Absolutely. Um, social's there. You're going to do it. Now, if you do it effectively, um, there's some really creative ways that uh, moving forward, I see the, the let's say the, the future of online lead gen um, in general. Okay. The future of online lead, somebody really wants to start to uh, do an online lead um, strategy. It should be in a way to be an influencer. Okay. So we see influencers all the time. And, and when I say see, you literally see them. Influencers have to be seen. You have to be on video. You have to be doing something like a podcast or an informative video, uh, whether it be about the market, they have to see you. They, and, and, and just like, I think I know Tom Hanks. I think Tom Hanks, I, I know him. If I saw him on, the, I'd be, go up and shake his hand. Tom, I've seen all your movies. It's like, I know Tom Hanks. Why? Because I've seen him all these years. Well, if you start to give great information and you're professional, you're on video and people start to engage with you through online leads and social, because um, you have done a, let's say a first time home buyer seminar, let's get into homes and have that seminar and people come and they join and um, they sign up for your program. Uh, that's online lead gen. 
that now they know you. It's a soft. It's a, it's That's a, it's organic a online lead gen. It organic. took you a little bit of time, but it was probably the most effective way because you were very 100%. real. You got seen. You didn't pay for it. A hundred percent. And they already know you, right? They already, they, they think they know you. You haven't met them. You don't know them. But they know you and I've had this. I, I, do, I do a lot of training and, and uh, I have a training channel and all the rest of it, you know, and a lot of my agents too. some of them I haven't met. Right. Some of them are at uh, offices that I haven't stopped. And I haven't seen them in the office They're, You know, we have 700 agents. I you know, haven't mm -hmm. met every single one of them, um, but I'd like to. And but they've met me. They've seen all my training. They come up to me. Oh, Aaron, it's you know, I'm like, hi. What's your name again? I and mean, I feel horrible. But they're like, don't worry. I've seen all your videos. <laughs> you know, they, they're talking to me like. I'm their friend. Now, that's what I do to engage with my agents and, and provide good value. Um, what you should do as an agent is do the same thing, but do it within your community. Do it within your groups, your um, the influencers you'll have with the different groups that you'll, you'll join. Um, and you can do that through video. It's It, it takes a little bit of time, effort, and uh, we'll tell, you know, just you've got to be brave. You've got to start doing it. That's all. And, uh, but as soon as you talk with that passion, that, uh, the, the informative nature, people will start to gravitate towards you. And it's like, yeah, listen, I, Aaron, I'd love to, I'd love to have you help me buy a house. Right. So that's the future and online with, with social. But if you're not doing that and all you're doing is going around and commenting and liking things. Yeah. That's a waste of time. You know, right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's okay that some other people that you have, you've done business with sees that you like the fact that they went to the, you know, or their kid won a baseball tournament this weekend. It's great. But unless you engage, right. And they start to see you, I don't know if it's going to be the best, you know, use of your time. Well, I like that though, to make proper use of time on social. And, and we do think that engaging is an important thing. People also need to see you. And I love that point though. It's, it's, it's crucial that they actually get that sense, you know, and, and, and I've said this to everybody, um, the past number of or past 24 months or so has, has forced us on video, you know, so to, to, and, and I mean, some of us have been doing video a lot longer, but, um, for people that were not as comfortable, everybody got forced into it. So it's almost, you're, you're like, it broke the ice for you to go, Hey, don't worry. Everybody's tripping over themselves right now. Jump in and get wet because you know what, you're going to come out and you're going to come out where people are going to know who you are. Again, it's, it's one of those days that, well, Hey, we're building a lot of mind share. Um, as a marketing tactic, you also talked about the importance of, of getting together with people and, and doing the lunches. And um, why do people believe it's such a time waster for them to one, enter data into a database and two make the phone calls that they so badly need to make? Why, why don't we look at that as like the most income producing activity we need? Uh, it's just um, I think in general, we're kind of we're kind of scared to make those calls, I guess. It's almost like we're. I don't know why they think that would be a waste of time because that is bottom line, your relationship. You need to be organized. You need to, you need to go through your list to make sure that your notes are made. Like if, if I'm going to make some phone calls today um, and I'm going to call some of my past clients and touch base with them, don't I want to remind myself in three months when I talk to them again, that their, you know, their son, Billy was going, um, was taking the, uh, uh, an entrance exam into, uh, into a college or university. So I can bring that up and say, oh, so did Billy get in? Why right? would you bring that up? Why? Because it shows I care. It's ah, a good caring, thank right? Thank you. If, so you need you to take the notes because there's no way if you take, if you don't take the notes, you don't remember Billy's going to you university. Forget, you forget. And, right. and anybody who knows me knows, you know, if it's not in my schedule, if I don't make the note, you know, I got so many things on the go. And so do you. Everyone has so many things happening. Um, the relationships, but listen, I, and I'm not going to say I'm the best at it. I nope. know there's just my partner, consistent. Like Richard. My, the, I worked with Richard for 10 years. He was yeah. the guy I built the team with. And when I was selling, he knew what I had for dinner last night, every day. He's like, Aaron, so what do you have for dinner last? Oh, roast beef. Yeah, that's great. And I'm, I, I'd answer him roast beef. And I'm like, oh, by the way, are you going to that showing tomorrow? I get right to business, right? Yeah. And I'd always have to remind myself, he helped me become a better agent because he was so relationship focused, right? So that's you like cool. to surround yourself with people like that, that care, yeah. that care, that show they care. And they, it's just, it came natural to him, right? So those are important Tell relationships. Tell me this. Um, what are some non-negotiables? And, and maybe we just labeled a lot of them off today, but that an agent needs to be focused on in order to spend their time wisely, you know, so that they can have success. I mean, maybe some of the most effective strategies, the non-negotiables. I mean, just that we're not wasting time and we're getting ourselves to that place that we want to get to. I mean, yeah. again, we might have that we might have just gone through that over this past hour. 
No, and you're yeah, we did, and we talked a lot about it, right? This organization, its systems and places, and all that kind of stuff. My non-negotiables, okay. The first thing that anybody comes and does is say they could say, "Hey, business is down. What do I do? Hey, um, what about online legion? Should I do that? Um, I got an open house this week. Whatever it is, the question I ask them: What's your number? Your non-negotiables. You got to tell me where your relationships are at, because if you're not focused on, so you bring. First thing I say: Bring me the list of people that you know with addresses into it and i tell them to put it into the crm system soon as i see that and i know that it's organized i want you to start categorizing them i want you to start making notes those are non-negotiables for any coaching program that i i do with my agents right non-negotiable i can't talk about your business unless i know where your business is at then i know the percentage i know those 80 people are going to give you 12 deals next year which is worth about 150 to 200 thousand dollars worth of business what did you do last year 180 thousand well, there you go. That's the reason why you have great relationship with 80 people. I mean, that I, you just verified the fact that your 80 people are, you're, you're obviously contact. Oh yeah, I had this, that. So, okay, now where do you want to go with this? Well, I want to double my income. Okay, now you're making that. Did you put any money? As so I go on to the next things, but my non-negotiable is to ask that question. Where is your sphere of influence? What's your number? Is it into a system? Are you sending the no code? That's the first non-negotiable. I, I we're, we're totally in line. I spin it a little bit differently. You know, I just I tell everybody like if you don't have a contact list before you brush your teeth tonight, to make sure you do that. <laughs> uh, one of my other ones is exactly the same. Again, we're very much in line, man. You know, what's your budget, right? Like, what kind of money have you got to be able to put towards stuff? And sure. it's not about taking it all and putting it in one basket, but it's about understanding what you have and mm -hmm. doing that in a realistic way, as opposed to depending if it works and throwing something at the wall to see if it sticks. And at this, you know, in the day 30, 60, 90 days later, you go, it didn't work. I got to try something else. That's not strategy. And then the next non-negotiable is um, your, show me your, what you're using today in order to book your appointments. There How you are you organizing Scheduling. yourself? Schedule. Well, I'm not Scheduling. using anything. I literally had somebody not use that. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, how do you know that you have a, you have, you know, you're meeting with me next Tuesday at two. How do you know that? And, and, and they're like, I think you, well, you're going to remind me, right? And I was no. You're yeah, that's what I said to me. How did you know to be here today? Well, the uh, office sent me an email. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's interesting because we just boiled this down to again, the why CRM question, we talked about the yeah. contact list, right? Mm -hmm. You spun it and, and, you know, know your numbers. And I'm, I'm kind of doing that at the same, in the same way, going like, know your budgeting, know your marketing. And then mm -hmm. we come back to scheduling. Right there That's it is. It. So those are non-negotiables. Those are things that run a business. Everything else is now, how do I, how do I do a better job? How do I, how do I re-engage? How do I, you know, and, and that's the fun part, but I can't do the fun part until the foundation's built. Fun part is like, yeah, let's try this, right? How are you with open houses? What have you been doing? Let's take this, yeah, and all the rest of it. So you can always add into it, but the non-negotiable, you can't, you can't be on a coaching program, a mentorship program. You can't be doing business um, effectively unless those things are done. And that's how you have more success. Sure, absolutely. So that, and hey, it's yeah. not even a success. Let's, success could be in quality of life. And as you know, I'm a big oh man, hunter. absolutely. Well, hey. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, yeah. How do you know it's been a successful day for you? Ah, oh, you're at home, you're with the kids, you're laying back going, everything's looked after. I'm not thinking in my head, what did I not do? What have I not done? You know, it's, it's that. And we all know if you're a busy agent, and here's another one. I've been talking to this agent for years. Uh, he does amazing business. He is so good at relationships. And he has and nowhere, I'm not, you know, I'm not, he is, he is almost six finger in, figure income. He's almost a million dollar producer without a CRM, without wow. a newsletter program, without wow. anything other than a phone and his personality. The guy oh, he's is an just old school an guy. Action. Then he hustles, old right? School. He just, Love he goes, it. he Love goes, but Darren, you know, every year I can't hire an assistant. I would have to pay her and she would rely on me to make money. And I can't do that to somebody and have them rely on my business in order to pay them. Like he's just worried about somebody else's income mm. that he's going to be paying for. And I said, I can't make that commitment. So I'm trying to get him to do this. Right. And he, he's on board. He's we're, we're, we got it going. Again, but again, he says again. every year, Aaron, I worry. I worry because I don't know where the next deal's coming from. There's no system set up. I don't if I, you know. If I don't continue making these phone calls, I'm not making any money and I get, I get it. So we can make it easier for you. That was my point before about constantly working in a transactional mindset. At some point, as we get older and the energy is not there, mm -hmm. where do we want to be? Right. And that's why we, we, again, both of us are, are preaching, set up your systems, right? That's how we're not going to waste time. Um, and I said six figure income. I really meant seven, didn't I? So you said, well, absolutely, million. but but again, and, and the sky's it's, the limit. It's a million dollars. I'm, sorry. I'm doing the numbers here. Yeah, no, it's no longer. Yeah, no, but even in, regard, I get. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
for what he was doing, though, imagine a guy like that puts a system in place. Oh my gosh! Oh like, my god, just, the amount of money, eh? Yeah, and and uh, but you know he's old school, and and that's, that's okay. It, it's okay, but what's not okay is he's worried. It, it's it well, really, that's. It, it, he, he fine, but real estate is an eat what you kill business. And you know what? The reality is most people do wake up worried every single day. Where's that next deal coming from? There's there's that there's that little bit of that thing when you're in real estate, you start to get there. However, we know that when your systems are set up, and we talked a lot about them today, you won't worry as much. In fact, you can actually limit the worry altogether because you just know through the longevity and the effectiveness of what you've been doing, it's gonna work. And whether it's there today, or it comes tomorrow or even next week. It's coming. I know it's coming because I'm doing the right things. That's right. Final words, tips, anything that you can share with everybody um, that's tuned in just to help them get out there, build more mind share, you know, get more market share. And of course, do the best they possibly can with time. So they're not wasting time. Market shifting. So you have to shift with it. I think that's the biggest uh, uh, change and shift that everyone's going to have to go through. So a big tip right now. Um, for those of you that are relationship built and you're there calling people, that's great. Continue to do that. Basically right now, uh, the transactions are cut in half. We were doing about as half as much business as we were a year ago. So you're going to have to try twice as hard in order to get the same results. So, um, hopefully those systems are in place, right? But always remember to go back and look at, um, the quality of listing presentation, what you do for, for a listing in the past, because of the shift, it was pretty much, um, face or you, you were, how am I going to uh, set up a multiple offer scenario in order to maximize the price of a house for somebody that that's what was the conversation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, Oh, by the way, I'm going to get on, on this website. I'm going to get there. And I'm, you know, I'm going to do a, a virtual tour or drone for any, any of that sort of stuff, but we're back to that staging. Utilize uh, the systems that are out there to provide a, a fantastic uh, customer experience. We got to get back to that face to face, get out of the uh, op home office, we'll call it, get out of the home office, come into the office or uh, get out to people's homes and, and start to re-engage with people because, um, yeah, the market's shifting and uh, they are going to want the in-person. They're going to want the in-person negotiation. They're going to want the in-person uh, listing presentation. Get off of AuthentiSign, okay? Get to the home and have a, a pen to paper, okay? I love technology. Don't get me wrong. I got you. Stuck, I love When this. you're stuck up at the at the cottage on the weekend and you need that waiver signed, I get it. You know, send the waiver, let them know. All the rest of it, technology is there to get you out of a jam. But don't put it in place in order so uh, you're going to minimize the amount of face-to-face -face interaction. Let's get back to that face-to-face. Well said, my man. Very well said. I love, you know, I love this conversation. Uh, Aaron, where can people find you if anybody wants to tap into you anymore? If anybody wants to find out uh, what you guys are up to at C21 Heritage, um, where can people connect with you? Uh, homesbyheritage.ca. Uh, it's our website. Um, we've got a join us link uh, videos on there. Uh, my YouTube channel, Century 21 Heritage Group Training. Uh, we have over 250 videos on there. Um, at this point, 101.3 I think is K subscribers and we want to get up to that 2000 subscriber mark. So help us out there, subscribe to the channel. It's great information. Beautiful. Amazing. Well, I encourage everybody to tap into this guy, follow him, um, connect with him. Uh, uh, just a brilliant mind, Aaron. You know, I always enjoy the conversations together. There's always a lot of good. marketing strategy talk. And so it's uh, right up my alley for sure. But uh, I thank you sincerely for making the time to join us today here on the Mindshare podcast. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Thank you, pal. You're either watching us live, you're watching this recording, you are listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, maybe you went to my website, mindshare101.com. Um, and while you're there, by the way, if you go over to the, uh, the website, make sure you download the free copy of the Ultimate Marketing Bundle for Realtors. It's a 31-page ebook with a 90-day social media content calendar in there. So it's got a ton of value, and it's going to help you really understand, am I using all the right channels to connect with people? And Aaron and I spoke a lot about those today. Um, am I using the right channels? Am I connecting? with the right audience? Am I really putting myself in the right place at the right time? So again, the Ultimate Marketing Bundle will help you really figure that out. It is a great resource, absolutely free. I just want to encourage you to go over to mindshow101.com. It's right there on the page and download that. Of course, it's going to help you build a lot of mindshare so that you
can get a lot more market share. Um, also, if you, of course, uh, we talked a little about coaching. Uh, we dropped that in a little bit today, uh, but uh, you know, with nothing specific, but I am going to be specific here and say, if you do want to talk about one-to-one -one coaching, if you do want to analyze your systems and understand what you're doing to get yourself to that next level, um, be it from the you know uh, scheduling and the marketing and the budgeting and the business planning and all the other stuff that comes into you know really growing a very successful business, um, I want to encourage you to reach out to my team. Um, just go over to uh, mindshow101.com forward slash coaching info, and you have to fill out a little form. My team will get in touch with you, or you can even email us at info at mindshow101.com. And again, my team will connect back. We'll set up a free explore call. We'll, we'll chit chat. We'll learn about what you're looking to achieve and well, how we will help you do just that. Um, also, we want to uh, ask you, uh, if you haven't yet, please go over to uh, ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. Uh, over there, you can, uh, well, you know, super easy. Just give us a nice uh, nice rating, a little review. Tell us how much you love the show. And uh, please feel free to spread the love, share the word, let everybody know um, that the, uh, the Mindshare podcast is here for the real estate industry, talking a lot about marketing and sales tips. We get some amazing, amazing guests as uh, we were just joined uh, by today. So again, make sure you do that. And then uh, if you haven't connected with me yet on Facebook, make sure you do that at Mindshare 101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan 101. Um, I want to thank Virginia Munden and the Buzz Conference for sponsoring today's episode. Be sure to visit their website, www.thebuzzconference.com and follow them on Instagram at The Buzz Conference to keep tabs on all of the awesome events that they are always hosting, along with getting the latest copy of the Buzz Digital Magazine. Um, also, do not forget about the June 24th event, which is coming up very fast uh, as well. Uh, we want to make sure you reserve the date uh, for June 24, as well as September 7th through 8th for Disruption 20. 2022. Of course, I need to thank Kids Keep In Touch Systems, who is always with us. Uh, I mean, wouldn't have it any other way. But uh, if you haven't checked this out yet, just go to my website, mindshare101.com and click on marketing. This has been another episode of the Mindshare podcast. Thank you for tuning in. 